Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I have been asked to um, chit chat a little bit about layout and composition for card makers. And I'm going to be, instead of making a card from start to finish, I'm actually going to uh, share some strategies and techniques or rules or guidelines that I use and, and then sometimes how I break those rules. <laughs> to develop the layouts for my cards. And I'm just going to use car many cards that I've made in the past as examples of how to apply these principles to your cards. So uh, grab a, a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and you may want to take some notes. All right, let's get started. Principles that I like to apply are uh, rules that I've picked up from reading books on graphic design or just studying it online a little bit and applied those. Now my canvas is pretty small, but typically I like to make four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards. Those are referred to as A2. And I also will make three and a half by five inch cards, also known as a four bar note card. And on the rare occasion I make a square card, because something didn't turn out right and the balance was off, I'll make a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square card. But I very rarely stray outside that aspect ratio because that's kind of my happy place. So it's a good idea to develop, to develop layouts that will work with the size of the card that you're trying to make or you like to make. So I have this sketch that I've done, and this is just an approximate, it's not to scale, but roughly uh, an A2 card or a three and a half by five card is going to fit within these parameters. And I have um, the card divided by thirds vertically and by thirds horizontally, which ends up giving me a nine patch grid. And this will apply whether you're working on uh, a vertical layout or a portrait layout or a horizontal or landscape layout, which is this one down here. So most of the time I tend to make vertical cards. So I'm usually working um, with this size canvas. So I will often consider where my points of interest are going to go and the size of my images. But one of my favorite go-to layouts is to take a medium to large image. It could even be a tiny one. And then I'll have a greeting that runs right here. Now this could be anything. It could be a house. It could be a person. It could be a flower. It could be anything. But this is like my number one tried and true layout. It's very simple. I know um, it's kind of a no brainer, but it just almost always works. So um, this is my number one go to. The second one uh, might be where I have an image down here and it's complemented with an accent image here. Now the idea isn't to fill these squares up with imagery. The idea is to take a look at the spacing and the amount of white space that's going on in between those images. Um, and these can be reversed in many cases. This one might look odd if you flipped it uh, upside down and did the greeting on top and the, the focal image down here. It might look odd. And part of that is we tend to look at things visually. We start at the top and work our way down. Okay, We might start at the top over here or over here. Uh, but something attracts our eye at the top and then we work our way down. We also, in English and in the United States and many other countries, we read from left to right. And we're starting at the top and then we go left to right. So we're always looking for that visual triangle that makes our eyes happy. So here you can see I have a really large image and complemented by a smaller accent image. I might have a greeting right here, or I might have it, if it's really small, up here. And what you're trying to do is to distribute the visual weight among these areas on your canvas. And the same holds true here. Um, you want to make sure that you're flowing. Maybe you flow from here to here and then across and your eye goes up that way. Now, in keeping with that, you sometimes have to think about directionality. Typically, uh, we open our cards from right to left, right? 
So the lead in on a card that opens where here's your fold line and here's your opening line, the lead in, and we read from left to right, it's going to lead us right into the inside of the card. So that's often something to take into consideration. That doesn't mean you always have to put your greeting in that position, but when you're thinking about flow and where the eye is going to eventually lead into the inside of the card, think about the directionality of words and how that uh, can be combined with your imagery. Now I have another layout I really like and that is to take uh, images and repeat them. This is one of my favorite uh, landscape layouts and they don't have to be the same thing. Um, but you'll notice that they're going to sit right about here depending on their height. If they're taller they might sit like this and take up more like two-thirds of this space. So you're always thinking about this space being divided into thirds and how to keep the balance on that. The, the eye likes odd numbers. Maybe because we're odd. I don't know. <laughs> but odd numbers makes us happy and that's what I try to keep in mind as I design my cards. And I do not always um, need the grid anymore um, as I plan a layout but that comes with time and practice. Now here are some examples of the first layout that I showed you, my go-to where the focal image is you know right here in this section and then we've got the cinnamon down here. Now this is a little bit of a taller cinnamon, it's not very long, um, but the balance still works and you can make yourself a template. This is just made out of report cover plastic that I found at the office supply store and I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I uh, used a Sharpie marker to divide it into thirds and a ruler <laughs> to draw straight lines. Does it have to be perfect? Well, no, but um, it, it helps you take a look at the space and how things are sitting on the surface of that card. So this is a four bar note card, even though my template is A2, and it still gives me a really good idea of how the flow is going. Now if I had a square card I'd probably want a square template um, to better gauge the flow of my layout. Okay, Here's another one. Although I do have, well here, there you can see it, although I do have some uh, images stamped up here, this is taking up, if you can see on the guidelines there, it's taking up about one-third, the upper third, and then I've got this image which is down in the middle third, but because of this imagery up here, um, this feels much more balanced than it would be um, if I had uh, not stamped these images up here. I might have needed to raise this a little bit so that the center of it was sitting in this range and bumped my sentiment up a little bit higher. But here you can see where I've dropped the sentiment down here to try to ease that space that is happening between the edge of the card and where all the imagery is. Here I've got my little bear. Okay, So this one, you can see there how she crosses from the center all the way up into that upper third. I've got a sentiment here and you're noticing it's a long one. To further uh, guide the reader to the inside of the card, I've actually placed an accent image right here. So it puts even more emphasis, not only on what the card says, but leads you to the inside of the card. I don't have anything in there, but you get the idea. Here's another example of having that focal image. This one's larger filling up that space up there and then my sentiment down here. And it's okay to either go straight onto your card front or if you like to have a little bit of a border. I wanted it that way because I was working with watercolor paper and I was going to seat that on top of a standard A2 card. And this border here helps draw the eye in towards the focal. And this is very pleasing to have this uh, umbrella. It's pleasing to the eye to have this umbrella set off here to the side and your visual triangle probably flows in this fashion, right? Boom, boom, boom. And it's not about being specific as to where that focal point 
is going to be, or, or the emphasis or visual weight is, as much as it is, does it feel balanced as you move across the surface of the card front? Here's another one. And actually on this one, I felt like I weighted it a little bit too heavy down here. As you can see, my image does extend above this. And to try to ease the fact that uh, the weight was a little bit heavier down here on the bottom, I decided to add some ribbon, which kind of helps the eye stay a little bit higher and then come down and run across to the inside of the card. Now, here's some examples of the second layout um, that I showed you, where I have a focal image and then an accent image. Here, I've got my focal image on the right, and I have my greeting up here. It was kind of tiny. It wasn't quite counterbalancing um, the focal image, so I added a little bit of ribbon. So sometimes when you design a card, if it doesn't feel quite balanced, there is something you might want to add or take away to create that balanced effect. And here you can see when I open the card, this leads you to the inside. So that just worked out really nicely. I love this card. <laughs> All right, this one, again, a smaller accent image and a larger focal here. And then you've got your uh, greeting here that's giving you that vertical plane and leading you into the card. And here you can see how I've got that space divided up. This is almost like a crosshairs where this is sitting in that crosshair area. And then you can see how this is actually bridging the gap all the way up to the midsection there. And then I've got that uh, horizontal line right here, which leads the eye that way. So you're kind of going like this. That makes sense. I'm hoping this makes sense. And one more example of this layout here where I've got the uh, focal image and I've pushed it further to the right. Now I could have flipped this and put the sentiment over here and pushed my octopus um, a little bit further that way. But because of his directionality, I might have had to angle him this way for that layout to make more sense. But as it was, I wanted to keep him like he's swimming ahead of the sailboat. So directionally, I have him pointed this way. And then I brought my greeting over here. But you can see that the little shark fin here has a directionality point that's pointing the viewer to go up here to this point of interest. And then you will naturally drop back down to the octopus here. And if it helps here to also see how this space was visually planned, notice where the horizon line of my ocean is. So I've got this two thirds taking up um, with water, taking up the scene here on my card. Here are some examples of that last layout that I showed you where we're taking up some area down here. And I used some rainbows and I made sure that this is a four bar note card. So I made sure that it took up um, about two thirds of that space. And then I have one third that is white space with just a few little uh, bits of embellishment, these little stars here. Now I could have taken the sentiment if it were long and straight, I could have set that down along this region here. Um, I could have set it also up here, but I kind of feel like that would have felt more disjointed and that this was more cohesive. So don't be afraid to experiment. And if it doesn't feel right, then, you know, I walk away from things and then come back and look at them. And if it still doesn't feel right, then I know I haven't got the balance going right on that card design. And here is another one where I've got the lettering going across the bottom. Now, the white space is filled with this pattern of stars and they're foiled and that's okay. It's okay to have that space, have a little bit of embellishment there just to add, as long as it doesn't detract or draw attention away from what you really want the viewer to focus on. And the fact that this is positioned slightly to the right allows the Eiffel Tower here that I borrowed from Bear's Grand Tour to kind of peek up here and not interfere with the letter N. Now, if I'd flushed it all the way to the left, this layout would have looked weird because of the uh, height of this image. So as you're planning out your spaces, think about 
the varying heights of the images or the sizes of the images that you're working with. Would this have worked if I'd pushed it up to the center third? Mm, probably, but because of the stars in the background that I had here that I really wanted to foil, it just looked much better visually to have it running along this lower third of the card front. Here I've got my little surfer dude and you'll notice there's no embellishment up here. There's a lot of white space up here and white space down here. And you'll see how that runs on the grid and creates interest. It's going between these two sections and this isn't quite centered on that line, but these images are tall. So you could, these could be tall flowers. They could be a row of people. Um, you could also put them up a little bit higher. And if you had a long cinema, it could run down along the bottom here as your people took up more of this space up here. But I had a block style sentiment. It's not long and skinny. So I voted to keep it over here. I voted. I made an executive decision. <laughs> and yes, I tested this out on scratch paper to see if it would work. So those are three of uh, my go-to layouts that I use quite frequently. I also have others that I'm just going to show you briefly. Here's one where um, this looks like a cluster. So I've got this little row of houses and the trees. I've got some uh, colored cardstock strips that are kind of giving it extra support in the cinema. And everything is all hugging and tight together. But I've determined that I wanted it in this location. And you can see how the crosshairs here kind of line that up nicely. It would have looked odd if this were like going off the edge of the card. So you need to keep in mind when you're looking at your edges, the spacing of where those images are going and whether or not that feels balanced. Here's another cluster where I took them all and the sentiment and bumped that down to the bottom. You can see how the crosshairs line up there and keep that balanced, even though, you know, there is a lot of white space up here. It still works. You could add a couple little um, sparkly things up here um, for added emphasis, um, but it's not necessary for this design, so that one, it works, so I left it alone. Knowing when to stop is always a good thing. Here's another cluster, this rainbow here, where I've got the sentiment. And here's one where I've clustered everything towards the center. And you'll notice that these are kind of in that upper two-thirds range. Everything is really tight and clustered together. This is another go-to that I love. Here I clustered, but I dropped them to the midsection. And the reason for that is that I knew I was going to have a sentiment that got placed right up here that would keep the balance on this design. It's black, so it's weighted heavier uh, than the pumpkins just by virtue of its color. But if I did not have that there, this layout wouldn't work at all. If I put the greeting down here, it would have looked off or unbalanced to the eye to have a greeting running along down here. Here's an example of a nine patch grid. And as far as visual triangle goes, I don't know that I really have one in here. I know that my eye is immediately goes to the right corner and then drops that way. Maybe your eye starts here and drops this way. But because these are very evenly spaced in a grid and positioned very precisely, this creates a balanced look. And when you're working with tall images, like here's one I wanted to share with you. This is a really tall flower. You'll notice it's mounted on the right, but the flower kind of leans to the left. Sometimes you'll need to tilt um, an image um, one direction or the other in order to make it feel more balanced. Um, this way works just fine. It's pretty much straight up and down because it's almost kind of gently curving around the sentiment, which acts as an anchor point. And if you're looking for the directionality, you're going to start up here with these pretty white flowers, you know, begin up here, and your eye goes down here, and then this 
twine leads the eye vertically across the surface and into the inside of the card. Now, this card probably wouldn't feel balanced if I hadn't added the twine, and I'm pretty sure that what happened is when I got to this point, I knew visually it needed something to complete that visual triangle and make my eyes feel happy. So that's where the twine came from. And on this one, same flower, but I positioned it to the left. And even though it's leaning towards the left, uh, I have done some uh, ink shading down here and de deliberately left it more intense here and wider up here. So the eye is going to travel this way around the surface. Another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, scale. So when you think about images and their sizing, so here's a good one. Uh, I've got this girl on the bike, and if she were actually right next to those trees, she would look really funny because her scale is much larger than the bench and the trees. So it would look like she's a giant <laughs> going through the park. She's not. She, but um, what you have to think about in terms of depth perception when you're building a scene Smaller images are going to appear in the distance when you stamp them up high on your canvas, and the larger images will appear to be in the foreground or closer to you when you stamp them lower on the canvas. Another thing, uh, if you'll notice, I've got her over here, so I have a counterbalance going on there. Uh, she's going this direction, so that's fighting the natural inclination to go this way towards the inside of the card. And to emphasize that the eye needs to go this direction to go into the card. I have used this diagonal line here to emphasize she's riding this bike, you know, and she may be here, but she's traveling in this direction. And so you're looking at where she's going to end up and then coming back around to where she actually is. Now, that sounds like a lot of psychological mumbo-jumbo stuff, and maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know. But I do know that no matter where else I placed her, it wasn't going to work on this particular card because she had to be uh, balanced by something over here and the fact that her directionality is going to that direction. So if I put her over here, this card would have looked ridiculous. And it's just one simple move. Push her over here. Okay? Here's another one. We've got uh, the bear and his grand tour elements here. I've got a city that's obviously in the background in the distance, so I've got that way up high. This uh, Big Ben is tiny. It's actually uh, was originally intended to be like a souvenir that Bear picked up on his travels and could hold in his hands. But to convey that it is uh, Big Ben in the distance, it's mounted up here, up high and away. And then we've got bear down here in the park and these trees are pushed towards the midsection and he takes up all of that presence right down there in this section. Now I very rarely ever break this rule which is not locating a focal image in the center of a card like dead center. If the sentiment is long and skinny and running this way it'll actually visually split the card in half and you need something in the surrounding white space to kind of help the eye feel much happier. So this sentiment here is very large and I was able to place that dead center with the help of this background, which fills up some of the white space all the way to the edges and it visually draws the eye in towards the center here. So this is one instance where you can break the rule and get good results. Another one is this one here where I have this sentiment in the center. And in fact, as I'm looking at it right now, I'm like, oh, I could have pushed it just a little bit further to the left. It still works. Um, I'm still happy with it, but it might have looked even better if I'd pushed it just a hair more to the left. But you can see how it's a big image. It takes up the center and it's pretty much placed dead center here. And part of it is the ligatures on these letters makes it feel like it may be off center as opposed to dead center. And that's why my eyes are telling me, ah, just a hair more to the left would be even, you know, spot on.
I also wanted to share an example of this is not necessarily a triangular flow, but here's what it looks like when you don't add an extra element to achieve that visual balance. So I've got these hexagons here and I die cut a whole bunch of them. And when I first started uh, gluing them down, okay, if this one were gone, do you see how that's weighted down towards the bottom and the white space there feels like it's like too much. There's too much white space. Something needs to be up there to kind of counterbalance the weight that's all falling down towards this edge. And so you can see right there how I remedied that. But don't hesitate to modify and adjust as you're in the middle of a design um, because things, things don't always pan out exactly the way you planned. But if you just kind of keep those things in mind, the visual thirds, that triangular flow across the canvas, uh, white space where it's needed, balance on that uh, nine patch grid, that really helps a lot. And I hope you find these tips and the information helpful to you as you design your own cards. Thanks for watching.